the storm with the silencer, but it's no good against the anti mage. I think maybe a lion then instead would help now yeah. against the storm. I think they go back to the jewel lanes, the undying, the t undying oh, tusk yeah. type lane. Mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see digital chaos ban it out. The other hero that's also good, not quite as brutal in the jewel lane, but great against anti mage is spirit breaker. It kind of limits his ability to do those cheeky creep cutting plays where he like where he's just blinking behind towers, clearing your waves. If you can charge him and keep vision of him, spirit mm -hmm. breaker, um, a good hero at at least negating some of anti mage's farming and pressure capabilities. Well, we'll see if DC do opt to ban out the Undying here, so they don't have to deal with that dual lane pressure on the TC, or if they wager something else could be a yeah. bigger factor against them, like that silence. Thinking long and hard about it here. All the meanwhile, though, we didn't really acknowledge it, but the Jug was snagged up yep. in the side of fire, just with the options that are left, and obviously PL not being a great option here. Next best thing, the J.O. Jug. So that's going to be good. But this is it, man. Elimination game. Not really surprised these teams really sweating out the last moments of this draft. But that AM center pick seems to be the, the highlight of it so far. And there's going to be the Undying Ban. Yeah, to me, the best substitute, if you want to stick with the dual lane, is the Spirit Breaker, as mentioned. But main other avenues you can go down is to get... Like, you can get that other range support, but I feel like if you get another range support, you have to look to win the safe lane as well as the mid lane. You want to be ganking the mid, putting Storm under a lot of pressure. The Dazzle Band suggests they definitely want to be able to gank the Storm and not have to worry about a TP Grave. So maybe something like a Skywrath could even come out. Mm -hmm. Single target silence. Um, so you either look to stop the anti from farming with like a Spirit Breaker or a Tusk Jewel lane, or you look to gank the Storm alive. I feel like those are the two different strategies that Fire can go with. And Oh, Night Stalker. Well, it seems ganking aggression may be more the play here as Night Stalker comes out. A full position Night Stalker at that. Yeah, I've seen Moo play the Night Stalker for them a while back, but they're going to be handing so, it off to Whitebeard, it looks like. I guess a kind of Night Stalker Tusk Jewel lane. We'll see if that's the call. Um... But that that's, I mean, it could start that like that, but then yeah, yeah, then this nice soccer begins to move. He'll move probably between like top lane, check runes, help out the mid lane a little bit. I don't know if he offers that much against the Darkseer. Maybe a surprise gank when it first hits nighttime with a level one silence. Mm. I I worry for fire though. Is it enough of a silence and enough of a lockdown to deal with storm? Sure, yeah. it is during the nighttime, but even then, nice soccer needs to be able to get close enough to. Second. Get that silence off on the storm. Definitely a surprise pick because if, if you're going for the silence, Skyrath can do a similar thing. Night Stalker is basically the tankier version of a Skyrath with with less damage output. But so the nice too. benefit is he's sort you're looking at the majority of the game being under that nightfall really restricts the yeah. vision from DC. Being able to have a confident jump in from your storm, from your AM, even if it's for some local farm, becomes that much more scary, and you start second-guessing yourself, and that takes away a lot from your farm and and any potential setup you want to be going for here. We'll lead in with a pause like we always do. I love seeing the drawings on the map and, like, kind of trying to imagine what the captains are saying. Like, what are they... <laughs> what are they trying to get across? Like, Beery on the Earthshaker was like drawing lines in an enemy jungle. Now they're, I mean, now they're just doing kind of blind circles. But there's definitely like some strategy talk going on when you see these kinds of lines. Again, we'll see the level one TP. Not surprised. Whitebeard looking to prevent Bulba from getting the ward down. Bulba does not TP down himself. I'm sure he probably ex like kind of mind games expected this move and just doesn't want to waste TP money. His slow. A, like show up to the lane, casual ward drop could be good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> almost overmind game Whitebeard. Unless Whitebeard just drops the ward right there, which he does. This now is, they'll see. If yeah, Bulba scan comes up in. Bulba coming in, and it, it means he doesn't have to just stay in that one position. So we'll see how things develop from there as far as the early warding goes. It looks like DC have something in mind as far as contesting this bottom rune. Although I think Fire are just going for the top one, so I think it looks like both teams may just get one rune apiece uncontested. Don't mind me just raising my size and my little icons here since the crash happened. I did lose it all. There we go. Boom. All right. Now I can actually see stuff. But size does matter. Well, so Moo, we already know the work he can do on Tusk. And it looks like, at least for now, unless this Whitebeard Nice Sucker does make that long rotation to the top, he'll be holding his own against just TC here. But I'm very curious. It's first rune. Where they're looking to add the extra bit of pressure, and it looks like from the DC side, it will be towards the bottom half. There's Bulba! 
Mm-hmm. He doesn't plant it yet. Now he plants Ooh. it. Did they? It's, I would hope so. I mean, they got the ward right there. Yeah, but he planted it from the tree spot. So, like, he, he went back into fog when he planted it, potentially. It's hard to say. Like, they know he, they know he didn't block the pool camp. That's, that's what they know for sure. So they... They'll probably have it. They should be able to get the D ward off. They have the sentry, right? Yep. I hope so. Yep, they do. All right. So other dire ward at that top rune, and it looks like DC just going to use that knowledge to not even go for this top rune contest. Well, he's going to worry about that Rubik cliffing potential as Rubik, like, fire are completely split up. Two at bottom, three at top, and maybe hoping to make a play with the Rubik here. Be careful, though. Lake Fury as well. Fisher block and Arctic burn slow, yeah. and you're going to oh. be the first blood. They just run in with numbers. It, it's basically a show of force where it's like, we have four heroes here. You can go for a flashy play, but chances are it doesn't work out. And in a key game like this, it's not a time to take kind of low percentage play risks. It's nice for fire as they got Moo to help with the block a bit earlier, though, than the side of DC here where Owie shows up. So they could end up with the better block here. It looks like they might right about in the middle. Okay, so both sides will be pretty squared up on that front here. You'll get your Queen of Pain Storm Spirit matchup. Looks like Biru is going to do what we've seen plenty from him on this Earthshaker, hanging around this mid lane, just firing through these clarities, dishing out the fissures onto little Susie here, forcing him to yeah. go right through that regen. And he threw his first fissure in the off lane to make sure Bulba guarantees his level 2. So, just helping him out as, as needed and it's instantly, it. the, the reaction from Fluff is just to pull. If that lane equilibrium is up near the river entrance, you always, you'll always see Fluff just go straight into a pull, look to bring the wave back to a point where they can just maintain equilibrium, have a kill threat, because when it's at his tower, you're not going to have any potential of killing Bulba. And uh, just, just solid support play from Fluff. We see this every single time he's playing that kind of zoning support in the safe lane. And as expected, Bulba's like, what are you doing over there? And Brian's like, don't even bother. Just <laughs> yeah. stay over there. Don't even come close. Zones him back in a way so he can't even leech that little bit of extra XP. And now J.O. gets to work with the CS under the tower. Seven tangos on him. He went all in with this regen and even uses the salve now. This is kind of deja vu from game one as well. Fluff picks up a TP scroll instantly. So he wants to have that ability to help out the off lane, go for kills, and make sure they get off to a good start. Potentially even save the mid lane. But I feel like this is, like, going back to game one, Fluff was TPing to the off lane very early mm -hmm. on. And I think that's part of what he has in mind with this TP pickup. Yeah, the two of them. Oh, no, the two. Knucklehead trying to muscle back TT for trying to get some comfortable CS. Yeah. They are eating bits of harassment here from Owie. Got level 2, but he's reserving the point. Maybe if there's an offensive chance to dish out a splinter shot, he wants to quickly level it up. And then obviously if the pressure comes a bit too much, he can quickly throw a level into that cold embrace. Save an ally in need. Yeah, the splinter blast is great if you can have kills and get aggressive. But right now, like you're you're supporting an anti mage, chances are you're not going to get an opportunity to get much out of a splinter blast. Unless Beery decides to rotate top, but he seems to be focusing more towards the mid lane where Fluff has shown up as well. Fluff off to a great style. Like he gets the pull camp off. He even got last hits on a centaur camp, so he's got a decent chunk of gold. He's rotated mid. He's hit all his good early game timings and. Now looking for a D ward here in the mid lane. Unfortunately, the sentry's on the wrong side of the river, so mm -hmm. he won't find that dire ward. So he will swing towards top. Yeah, he puts the ward up on the high ground, and will take his business all the way towards this top lane. Touch with TC, still has a salve and one tango to work with. And because there's no pressure on bottom for Bulba anymore, he's just going to do his own pull work. Yep. And just quickly eliminate all of these creeps with the Iron Shell. This is going to boost up his farm dramatically. He's getting solo XP with it. Top lane, Arctic Burn comes out from Owie. Harasses Moo a little bit and Whitebeard. But it's not enough to pull him away from the lane. They're still keeping Fluff way back and in the dark. Off the radar for DC. Yeah, he's off. I think he feels like he can be most useful in the top lane. Bob is just a smart enough player. He won't give up kills. We may see Fluff return to bottom lane around the time J.O. hits level 6. That level, that, that Omni Slash is where you can actually kill the Darks here and not have to worry about the Surge escape. So I imagine that's around when Fluff returns bottom. And that's why he's left the bottom lane. He's basically said, look, I can maybe have an impact elsewhere on the map, J.O. You can get solo XP, and when you hit level 6, let's look, let's look to kill Bulba. And Fluff does have the TP to get back down there should uh, the opportunity arise. Yeah, so. Top doesn't really need the assistance right now. You look at move 15 and 1 CS. He's matched up with the AM on the other side. And they're splitting the XP between the two of them. 
Yeah, they're both level three, and that's your first nightfall. We'll have to see if Whitebeard is going to use that nightfall advantage here in the top lane, or if he considers going out. Because you know there was that recent change. Obviously, nightfall comes a bit sooner than we're used to. Mm -hmm. So typically, your night stalker isn't as big and bad on that first night, but they might consider using it. Early harassment comes from Moo, but he's eating the most of the damage right now because of that Arctic force coming out from Owie. I'm going to salve up on both heroes, though, and I think they're going to re-engage. Fluff has shown up. He TP'd up top, so he's actually not going to go for the Omni slash kill. He's looking for, I imagine, TC. Cold Embrace is ready, though, and won't be an easy kill to get, even with the Night Stalker silence. I wonder if they have the burst to take down TC and throw the silence onto the Wyvern instead, but... They're going to go uh, scatter these stacks here, and there's a big stack. Just not something easy for them to find. Uh oh Biru is going there to try to maybe stack it again, but Whitebeard will see him. They're going to pincer him. Well, he's going to cut him off, forces him back, and now they're going to get the void damage. Yeah. Right click, there's the lift, and look at that. 747 shows up just in time to secure the first blood bounty. It takes a bit of time, five minutes, but it's going to be Team Fire who will strike first here in game number three. Yeah, and I, I like that they wait for the Queen of Pain to get there to get the last hit. It gives Queen of Pain a nice little boost. A hero that can do a lot more with the gold here early on, so... Often you see supports taking kills like in the laning stage, which is fine, but we've gotten to the point where a mid laner like Queen of Pain isn't really getting, like, isn't dominating the lane. So any any edge you can give Queen of Pain over the Storm will, will pay off. So Storm about to hit level 6 has had no problems getting any kind of experience out of this lane. And we'll have to see what Fire do about that big stack, if they can go in and contest it. But I imagine with it being scattered out, you are just going to, he's already there and it looks like he's just going to farm it now. Yep. He'll be able to re bottle up. And burst down it without too much trouble, and Biru will be able to leech in the XP. So he's just happy to get a little bit of payback for having to sacrifice his own life for the greater good of the stack. 747 back in mid lane, looking to push towards getting that level 7. So Sonic Wave obviously online here. Yep. We'll see if he wants to participate in maybe something towards this top lane. It's just an illusion rune, not the best rune for him to really go out and try to get something done, but for now, it looks like he'll just take it back towards his mid lane. Bottom, though, we're back at J.O. here, level 7 on his jug, yet to really use that Omni Slash. I'm sure he's calling for ganks. Like, as soon yeah. as you hit that level 6 Omni Slash, all you want is that one disable, the Rubik, the Tusk Snowball, and it's going to be Tusk headed down bottom, so it looks like if Rubik shows in the map, Darkseid probably thinks he's safe just because Rubik's the one roaming, but this is the first time we've seen Tusk kind of leave the lane and move on out, which could catch Bulba a little bit by surprise. Looks Tusk like very near this Darkseid. Unfortunately, they haven't quite caught on to exactly where he is. Oh, he grabs up a bounty and is thinking about heading towards the mid lane here, so okay. we'll not continue on for bottom. No Level seven slash kill. A sonic Wave. We'd have to take a bit of lockdown to catch the Storm, though. He's level 7. There's oh, the Snowball. The and he does. Yeah, and he easily balls away. Now he's out of mana, but there's not going to be the shard follow-up. It's just a bit too deep. Bulbax, he's surging on in. Is he looking for a... Uh... No, he's not going to go for the kill. Yeah, I was about to say. Like, two that's... ships in the night. Just cross right past each other. Bulba will head around the corner back towards that bottom lane. But look at this. Kill. Fluff moves in. Sees your war with very little mana. They've got Bulb, move in. Oh, 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 didn't oh come on, I mean, right, come one on. Right click. Just gonna, oh, God damn it. No, Sonic Wave. Uh, I mean, it's <laughs> That's a panic wave world, if I ever but... saw one. Yeah, but... it, was a, it was a definite panic, like, holy crap, is this guy actually going to live? But yeah, one right click would have done it, but better safe than sorry. Like, it's something that could, it does prevent their aggression over the next minute or so, where, well, two minutes really, where another kill on the Storm Spirit is going to be very difficult without the Sonic Wave, but... The, just making sure you get the kill, so... Now, because they were able to plant those deep wards, fire were, they will see TC farming in the woods, so if Owie moves up too far, they know he'll be alone. Or if they want to make their own mission and go out in the woods and hunt down a TC, they could. It's daytime again, which makes it a bit hot. They don't really have the capabilities to do. I mean, they can pop the darkness, but it's a big giveaway, unless you've already... unless you immediately silence him up. Whitebeard has a chunk of gold he's been holding on to here. I figure maybe for a treads or something, but... Maybe a Midas game, even. I feel like my, it's not not a bad item to go on Nightstalker, who's just can do a lot with levels and doesn't farm particularly well, so it kind of ensures you can stay relevant yeah. moving forward. Um, there's not, like... The only other item I feel like that can give you a big early game relevance is, like, getting an urn. But if you can just go straight for the Midas, I think it, it, it's an item that definitely pays off a Nightstalker. 
Mm, he's getting some assistance from Fluff, so that seems to be the case. They want to prioritize a bit more farm on him so he can get a good head start on boosting up that XP and maybe building up towards that Agnum Scepter. We'll touch base with Bottom here. Jaya, who could be under pressure here very soon, was able to grab a hold of his reliable Morbid Mask, but yep. Earthshaker and Bulba hunting on through. There's not many here you can really gank because he's got the Blade Fury. Mm -hmm. They'd have to bring in the Anti-Mage to cancel a Blade Fury TP, which is not Dying really something TC wants to do. I mean, if he gets a kill, it's well worth it in his mind, but the preference is it's not really a efficient use of their time and it's not going to help the anti-mage farm although anti-mage is being forced to jungle it seems right now they've got winter's curse okay so they have a second thing to cancel the tp aui getting some alone time in this top lane but here comes the smoke they're coming right now let's see if they can catch tc smoke pops they know where he is they're gonna pop the knight they're looking to turn the corner tc's like why is it dark all of a sudden oh crap they move in, he misses oh, the uppercut top. connection. There's going to be the snowball, but the TP's already coming from Biru. And he's going to commit the fissure, and they will not be able to get it. That's one of those, like, ideal places to be, because you pop the smoke, and then they can't gank you. At that small camp, it's really hard for them to gank you without... Like, you. they're not going to ever catch you by surprise there. And it's a spot that doesn't get warded that often. Like, you can ward behind the T1 tower and see the small camp, but... Teams generally prefer to ward exactly where Fire have. In the enemy jungle where you see the two medium camps, that's a much better spot to get a lot of vision and to scout out junglers. Bottom lane, Invisioir creeping in, starts by dropping down the spirit, moves in, kills the ward. And Jayo's able to get off the Omni Slash here. He tries to avoid it with the ball lightning, but he will end up going down. But look at this, the return, 747. Oh, now he's in trouble. They're going to get a twofer here with this if he goes down, and he will. Oh, buys bigger than your stomach on that one. 747 not going to be able to get it. And that means they lose two, two of their cores. Yeah, the big thing for Jug there was Blade Fury was on cooldown for about three more seconds when he died. I I, I mean, I, I imagine that was just something Darkseid kind of reported like, hey, he used Blade Fury about 20 seconds ago. He's not going to have it anytime soon. Moo gets caught with a curse, and there will be the void. He snowballs uh, delayed a bit, but the ending is still the same. He will end up going down. And that strings together three kills yep. for and DC. Started 2-0, yes. but now they're going to be up 3-2. Yeah, this this game, unlike the last, your Wild Storm Spirit has not been shut down whatsoever. Bulb has already completed a mech for the team, so it's just been the anti who's had a bit of a rough start, but one of the best kind of catch-up farming heroes. And it hasn't even been that rough of a start. He's on par with Juggernaut in terms of CS. His net worth is ahead of the Juggernaut, so I don't even... I mean, can't even really classify this as a bad start for anti -Mage. He's been forced to go more of a jungling route, and he's also been forced to pick up more regen items, get the Ring of Health and the early Ring of Regen, but he can make use of all these items later on for the Vlads. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be a big issue for him. It's just a slightly slower Battle Fury, but ultimately he's still well on track to get a decent timing for all his items. I'm sure J.O. now putting together those phase would love to just get some kills underway. Still 0-1, pretty quiet for a Jug. Someone who loved to be able to participate and get some kills. Yep. It's not not going to be so easy. Here we go, though. We still got some nighttime. 747 shows up with company. And they will smoke. Head towards the top where Moose here. Just, you know, up casually a tusk farming. No big deal. Seeing if maybe they can get a catch onto Owie. He is a bit concerned, so he puts himself up behind the tower. They move on through in hopes of catching TC, maybe jungling, which he's not, but he's going to. Moving up in there. Oh, oh, uh, oh, 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 gets the silence after the blink, so he gets in a good spot. An opportunity going to be gone there for fire. Two smokes in a row. Oh. Wait, they haven't been able to catch the anti-mage. Just right through their fingers. Yep. Can't get a hold of them. Very Let's get Owie instead. <laughs> Run back. We gotta do something. I mean, sometimes you're just like, we gotta get something done. We're all up here. Just get in there. Where is he? Huh? TP's on these oxygen and bulbs. Moves in. Where are you? And Owie's like, sorry. Jo's in trouble bottom lane, by the way. Oh, they can't make, TP make against Manavoy. And, and they already know so many people are committed to the top lane. He's alone. He gets blown up. A wall and a void. He's committed for it. And all the meanwhile, pressure coming in on the mid lane. This is... Big, big stuff yeah. for DC. They are just playing around fire. 
un unintentional or not, they just, it almost cool. feels like they're playing them like a fiddle. Just conveniently yeah. always just out at the right time and in at the right time. TC's rotation bottom there just accomplishes so much. He wasn't getting any farm at top because they've committed four heroes to his jungle. His rotation bottom secures a kill on Juggernaut because he has one of the two abilities which can prevent a Blade Fury TP escape. And it finds him a new place to farm. He can farm the Radiant Jungle as well as the bottom lane. He actually takes the jungle so Bulba can farm the lane. It's kind of selfless play. You can get a bit better farm in the lane, but TC basically says, look, it's more overall farm for our team. So he kills two birds with one stone with that rotation bottom. The, the Juggernaut as well as finding a place to farm. And it's just a great position to be in if you're TC right now. Yep, and there's not much, as you can see, that Fire could do to stop him. Moose sees him and is like, I'll just casually slap him, but that's not going to stop him. Well, TC maybe getting a big, too but big this for could his stop him. Here. Oh, he's going to get lucky a third time. They start with the lift. There's the snowball. There's the Waller's punch. There's the kill. This time he will not be able to yeah. weasel his way out. Fire, after what feels like a good chunk of time, will finally be able to scrap together another kill. And that was... And I think just not recognizing they'd been scattered by the Observer Ward there, so they kind of could tell where his jungle pass was, was leading. And he's like, okay, I'm being kind of sneaky, farming deep in the enemy jungle, they're not going to expect me to be here, but the Observer Ward kind of spotted him out, and they were just kind of read where he was going from. They seem to know exactly where Fire is. They move in, and he's going to be taking the totem, but all right. They'll take the whole thing with it. They kill Biru. Nice little bounce back. A now couple of kills, they've got decent control in the enemy jungle. Observer would not yet dewarded, and it looks like they will, yeah, they'll get the T1 mid tower. And Jo gets it. So this is pretty much pulls things back to even in terms of net worth. Fire still have the storm sphere to worry about. Yeah, but. he'd been farming this whole time, gods. Yeah. He's 2k gold. He is going to have a nicely timed bloodstone. At the I same mean, time, Orchid on Queen of Pain is also looking like it will be at a pretty decent time. It is a good grab. We still seem to be quite a ways off before TC can even put together that first component of a Manta. Obviously, Yuar is going for the Bloodstone, so no nope. himself or Yules even if he wanted to try to battle with that silence. So that could be this Queen of Pain's chance to really make a big play. And oh, bottom lane, someone will say, oh, gets out. <laughs> Takes one creep and then immediately blinks away. And when he sees TC, it's like, yeah, okay, I think this is actually a trap. Well, good game sense tingling for him because he's right. There's trouble all behind him. And they might get eager themselves and start venturing into the fire. Uh oh, Brian scouts him, but he gets knocked with a quick fissure. Pulled back, but he gets the blink stolen and uses it to get away. Now it's 747 looking to move in, but there's a big Winter's Curse on oh, the slash. Follow up is going to get the oh. kill on TC. Jay will look at his zone back the rest while Bulba makes his moon onto Fluff. Mu hasn't blink. even showed up it. yet. Moo's going to come in. Bulba thinks that he's just got a safe getaway right here, but there's Moo. Hits him with the uppercut. Now they're looking to lock him in place. There's the shards. They sweep in. Jo and company all behind him, and they're going to get the kill. That was so nice from Fluff. He, I, for a second, I'm like, okay, Fluff's just going to die and take the smoke gank. That's still fine for fire. Like, that's your five-position hero dying to a four-man smoke gank and saving your Queen of Pain. That's okay, but he, he gets the telekinesis off, steals blinks, escapes, and then sets up a huge kill on the Antipede with the Sonic Wave on the side. So that was just, that was insane play from Fluff. Such quick thinking, and that really hurts DC. That was a big turnaround in Fire's favor. Now more gold coming their way. That Whitebeard did commit for the Mayas, had been using it, and quickly has 2k gold saved up. If he wants to start throwing together that ag so they can have that much map control. It's probably the item you want to go. I don't think they're going to... It's definitely an item you want to get eventually. It's just whether you kind of make a stop off somewhere else along the way. Mm -hmm. um, and I imagine it will just be a straight ag game. It's a bit early to say, but with that big fight, definitely things have swung around. XP broke even, but net worth all the way for fire now. Here's the tough Dagger. This has been such a key item for Mu in all his previous Tusk games. When this comes online, he just starts getting so much done. And Fire, they want to get aggressive again. They've got a smoke. 747 has Orchid picked up. They've got the timing right. Blink Tusk. Oh, man. Blink Orchid. The anti just better be careful. And an invis room. They'll what, see him soon. What more could you ask for? With the Observer Ward, but not right away. If the smoke pops, oof. Who the other way. Switch up the invis room. Oh, they see him now. Yep. They're going in. He's now, got a Owie. Winter's Curse there. Owie yeah. is in a great position. Move in. Lift. They go for it. Big Winter Curse. 
What a save right there, but it doesn't matter. They're going to get the follow-up. Tried to call them price to get him out, but it doesn't matter. Now, they might get a return kill on the move. Pops the one there at the end. Still alive and well. Eventually, will get popped and taken down. Fluff seems to be the next car target for Yawar, but he's getting a bit low on mana. Sonic Wave will connect. Jump in screen. Kind of get b real will get him down. Yawar is silenced. He's silenced. He's looking for a TP. Will not make it out. There's a lift from Fluff. Vacuum back from Bulba to try to get him through the wall here. But they're going to try to turn and run away with another big fight. Three for one. Oh, that was a good catch. Yeah, great catch. And AUI was in the position for the Winter's Curse. The cold embrace, that was the problem. It's like you want to save your teammate, but he, while they were Winter's Curse, it was actually when mm. TC could blink away. The, exactly. the cold embrace prevented the blink escape. So it actually, I mean, he was in the right position to try to save his buddy, but then he just slightly misplayed it. It was still like you can't entirely fault AUI. TC was dead if he's not there to begin with. So. AY I mean, did half the work, he just couldn't get over the finish line. It looked like with where the Winter's Curse was that maybe the Queen of Pain was not going to get caught in it. So That's he's exactly. like, ooh, this Queen of Pain could kill yep. TC, but actually... It's a deceptive amount of AoE. And no. that's, that's what I, I thought that for a second Queen of Pain was outside of it, so... I, I think that was exactly AUI's reasoning there. Well, unfortunate for him, that means that TC will go down. And Whitebeard for now, Ogre Club. But he had to buy something else, right? Oh, the Point Booster. So definitely an axe for him. And conveniently, it's 20 minutes. Nightfall time. As if Fire wasn't already on the Prowl and getting some good kills, now it's nighttime. Let's see if they continue to turn it up here. Jo's yes. got his Yasha set. And Wolf will Moo here. Still just holding that blink dagger, obviously, but this is their time. They've got all their crucial mid-game items, their orchid, their blink. Magnums is actually almost done, so after this night finishes, he could have it, and then it's just night time for, like, what, 75% per of the time yeah. of this game? They've got a couple, like, really high-impact items coming. The Ags on Queen of Pain as well is another big item to have because it just means you can have much more constant fighting and aggression. Like, they throw that ultimate there, and they've kind of got to wait... A minute and a half before they can fight again because they really want to have the sonic wave when they go ganking the anti-mage deal with the storm as well um, so they'll have both ag scepters joe will have his smy i imagine it then gives them also great roche taking potential on the radiant side oh they're going bottom here they smoked up for this they see move they jump up and above past him there's gonna be the pull fissure and was stolen from fluff blink. but he's not gonna be able to blink after the snowball so they'll get the one catch right there it does hand over fissure to fluff but they're successful with their smoke. And they'll just take it for what they got right now. I mean, it's nice. They get the tusk, but there's no tower to follow it up with. They have to commit so many people for it. They'll still need a bit more, though. If you compare it to what Fire have been able to get with their last few, few trades, it just doesn't seem to match up. So and They still haven't got the Antimage Battle Fury. It's just about to be completed finally, but 22 minutes in... Oh, that's that's not the timing TC was after. I mean, I'm happy with 22 minutes, but TC is not. <laughs> well, for me, <laughs> when I play AM ever, that's like, that's one way to look at it. The glass half full. <laughs> well, he could be put off. No, he buys it now, but let's hear some of this trouble nearby. But it looks like they're going to be pinged out, and you are in fact commits in, gets fluff, who still has that fissure. Can he pop it? He can. No cast. Tries to throw him back. Secondary stun. Let's they got him though. Makes him work for it, but mm -hmm. Fluff will go down. Another successful catch-off right there for Digital Chaos. Okay. They've got some decent control going through the Radiant Jungle. A few wards happening fairly deep, and uh, is going to have to be the big playmaker. They've got answers to him. They've got Telekinesis, Blink, Walrus Punch, the Night Stalker Silence, but if he times his initiations, and in some ways you got to bait your teammates. Like, wait for them to go on someone else, like the Antimage, throw a Silence on the Antimage, overcommit on him, hope the Wyvern can save the Antimage, and then Storm can have a field day once some of those Disables and Silences have been used. Now this game feeling a, a lot more even, so it's going to be a bit touch and go, especially from the DC side. They want to keep this AM farming up, while Fire have a lineup which might look to get a bit more proactive. Yep. And look at this, Whitebeard is about to have his Ags, clears out this stack, he's got it. Yeah, similar story for 747. So he's about 1,000 gold away from his Ag Scepter, so... This nighttime probably going to end fairly soon, although Night Stalker can just, like you say, keep up that darkness spam as much as possible. And that's where also just Dire Observer Wards will not give anywhere near as much vision as they normally would, so that will also cause problems. I think DC 
really feeling under pressure here to saying this is the time to use some of their smokes to just get them back in the game, find some key kills before these items like Aghanim Scepters come up, although Night Stalker's already there. Yep, he's got it. 20 more seconds, I believe. It'll be daytime. You can see the comparison on the Ward Vision now if yeah. you wanted to as a spectator. Scattered out by this Observer Ward, though, so they know where yeah. he is, although he sees them. Okay, so he pops the Nightfall. Suddenly, they don't see as much anymore, and they quickly just hightail it out of there. They don't like that. They are running. Biru might be forced to turn back with a Fissure to slow them down. Uh, they don't want to overcommit. And the second they don't want to overcommit, DC say they want to commit in. So they decide to turn back. They go for 747. It's going to get pulled in into a Winter's Curse, into an Echo, and into a kill. Big grab right there for DC, but here comes the JO Omni Slash. Cold Embrace is going to help mitigate a lot of the damage, but they are going to be able to finish off the Earth Shaker. Now they move in. Uppercut for Yawar, but he's able to shrug that one off. They put their focus instead on the Whitebeard. He's going to be hit with the Mana Void. Fluff's still waiting behind. He's going to make the blink in and try to get the catch, but oh, nah, it's not going to be trapped. enough. They take down TC. Yawar's going to be going down. He's going to be forced to suicide. It's going to be Fire now, who are looking to clean house. TP comes in from Moose. Snowball's in. This Bulba... Darkseer, big trouble. He's going to be going down. It's going to be four kills on the side of DC. They only lose their Queen of Pain. Did it cost them a buyback? It didn't. That was just one for four. Yeah, they threw everything at the kitchen sink of that Queen of Pain. It was all their ultimates, the Winter's Curse. I, I guess the wall was held onto for a bit, but the vacuum was used. The vacuum, in a sense, like Darkseer's big, long cooldown teamfight spell was used. Fissure, Echo Slam. It was just all in on Queen of Pain. I think the idea was... The Queen of Pain with Scream, Sonic Wave, and Orchid is a key part of the damage output for Fire, but they heavily underestimated what J.O. could do on the Jug. He, instead of the Queen of Pain tearing them apart, it was the Juggernaut instead because of how many ultis and just spells in general they threw at the Queen of Pain. So I could see kind of the idea behind DC there, but once thrown all their spells, they were committed. And not just the Jug, the Night Soul could like maintain vision of everyone the entire fight, kept throwing oh. silences out, nukes. Sorry, they almost eyeballed each other. Right. 747 was quick on the trigger. Could have got maybe an Orchid off with Fluff being right there. Moon nearby with his blink. Could have been trouble. Well, oh man, and that, yeah, that was with everything being thrown at the Queen of Pain. Imagine if she was in yeah. fighting shape. I think the big thing they needed was to kill the Queen. They can throw everything, I'd say, except the Winter's Curse. If they'd held on to the Winter's Curse to deal with... <gasps> Look at this vision, with the darkness coming oh, God, out, they can't see anything. You wouldn't know it, but they have three OBS wards down on the uh, fire side. Yeah, they know they have. But it's so dinky. That's just such a huge factor in the game that we just don't see as much anymore since uh, Night Stalkers just seem to fall out of trend. Oh, and they see Wyvern here. Yeah, they can't hide vision. the trees, not with this guy on the prowl. Now he's just going to get silenced up before he can even try to fly, fly away. He is going to be brought right down to Earth. It's an easy tier 2 tower claim for J.O. He just seems so comfortable in this juggernaut. You talked about he was 5-0. and oh, Well, there's a reason why they, they play this hero. And it, it's a hero that got picked a lot less since 6.83, but it still feels like a very viable and strong hero. Like, especially just seeing J.O. play it time and time again. It doesn't feel like a weak hero at all. And it almost Some of the uh, nerfs I felt were a bit on the indirect side. You know, the Mask of Madness being touched. The Scotty, oh, Yawar just walks into the wrong neighborhood. And into the open arms of Team Fire. Yeah. Oh, Fire just up their game. And now they just go right into the pit. No. Oh, they're they not. Cold feet. Wyvern with, I mean, Winter Wyvern Darks here. This is, even with Storm dead and not buying back, it's just the vacuum Winter's Curse nightmare. Ah, they're going to check the not, replay and be very upset. Not to mention the potential for a vacuum onto the cliff above or below Roshan. Like, this is true. It's just, this is like one of the worst possible lineups to Rosh against. And they're winning the, it's like they're winning fights. They're the ones in control. Like a disastrous Rosh fight is one way to throw away their lead. So they're basically probably saying, yeah, we can probably roast. Like, let's say there's an 80 to 90 percent chance we do this and they don't come, but that 10 percent chance where you disaster happens yeah. suddenly in a game three of elimination, <laughs> it's not worth the risk. No. Oh, jump mid lane. You are coming back for some redemption here, trying to get a hold of Susie. Vacuum back into the future. Into the future. Into the fissure. <laughs> <laughs> back. Vacuum back to the future. Favorite movie. Uh, good catch for them. So. Yeah. That was just, yeah, ni nice execution. These are the kind of ganks a lot of teams just don't pull off and take a lot more coordination and teamwork than you'd expect.
having the the blink vacuum and then the perfect the fissure just all of the chain disable was just executed correctly and wipe it now in this and scouting out these movements here we go sees any sentry nearby no nope, but... need damage up to kill you are they've got rubik here but they need they're coming jail might yeah, have been spotted jug. from the high ground though omni slash not available but i don't think they need it Oh, walks past the remnant. They want to go. He wants to go for the easy kill in Owie, but you want to get the bigger target in Yawar. So they move in for him instead. Oh, what a vacuum wall comes out from Bulba. Huge Winter's Curse. Digital Chaos just do exactly that and cause a huge amount of damage. Wrecking right through fire. Looks like they're going to be the oh, team to walk away with a big five-man wipe and possibly a gem on top of it. There it goes. Oh, everything was going so right for fire, and then they go so wrong so fast. Yeah, it was just a bit of uncertainty with the Night Soaker. Like, normally that Night Soaker vision in that exact scenario gives you all the intel you need to pick a good fight. They only saw the Wyvern and the Storm, though, and then the other heroes just made it there in time. The Blink Dagger on Bulba coming up, TC blinking in as well to offer assistance to his team, so just oh, a bit too overzealous there and also just they were uncertain whether they were killing the winter wyvern or the storm jug went for one night stalker went to the other it just seemed like a bit of miscommunication there and that's something dc have not had been really good at they've always just seemed to be communicating on point and just knowing exactly when and where to strike it's always very much the team on the, the same page with fire it's been a bit more chaotic the way they just instantly did a 180, turned back, made the fight happen. You couldn't even ask for a better setup as well. Everyone clumps so close together. Of course, got to give a lot of that credit to Bulba. Big vacuum well, for him. Draws him into a big Winter's Curse and Echo look setup. Look at the gold swing off of that. That is huge. Oh, you better About be eight. locked in before you take a drop like that. <laughs> 7 to 8k gold swing off of that. That is worrisome. They're going to get on the move once again. They've lost the gem, though. The gem plus Ags on Night Soccer is so huge for map control, but they're walking right into a Dire Ward which scouts out this entire rotation. Mm -hmm. I think they were out of smokes. Yeah, they had no smokes left, and this is where Fire's game plan has to change a bit. They can't maintain map control. They can't just abuse the Night Stalker, Aghanim, Scepter, Vision as much as they'd like. And then they also didn't have smokes to make up for the fact that they can't deward the map, so... DC going to get a lot of room to farm and take this late game as a result. And also just a lot of... gives them the added ability to take fights of their own choosing. Well, fire. We'll see how composed they can stay. Yeah. I'm sure as a team, you, you feel like you're on the up and up. You get a big couple of fights. They almost did the Roche, too. Could have been successful, but then their riskiness... They We're actually the at dead even on net worth now. It's smack dab at zero. Man, that was a drop. This All is right. this is it. This is tight. Game three decider. They've still got answers to the Antimage in late game. Juggernaut, one of the great heroes that actually finding the Antimage head on. At least until the Antimage kind of gets the Abyssal. That's when Jug can kind of struggle because you go for this SMY Scotty build, which is the right build to go for on a Jug, but it also gives you a big mana pool. So if you get Blink Abyssal by Manta Style AM, you've got a mana pool where that mana void does a huge amount of damage. Looks like DC want to push down this bottom lane. Roche, an option for them. They can relieve a lot of the pressure and get some of these wards down. They drop one right here inside the woods, and the second they push out that bottom lane... They walk into the pit here. Yep. Doesn't look like fire. How are the wiser? Unless they're deciding to back and smoke, but I do see a smoke on Fluff here. They're setting up for this one, DC. They've got AUI already on the hill and Bulba lingering nearby as well. Doesn't look like fire will be contesting this one. Got plenty it's to tank up the damage and they already have 747 yeah. top, yeah. I guess they can pop the darkness to get them vision, and they do that now. Maybe it'll scare them out from the pit. Who knows? Doesn't look. Man, <laughs> you're getting fairly low. Ow, ow! AUI changes position here. Wants to get further away from a potential rotation then. And they'll get here, but it's, oh, no, Night Stalker not even going to go check it out. He's came close, but side against. Very apparent they know this is happening, so they'll have to let it go. They'll wait to see if DC yeah. do decide to use that bit of momentum to just go on the aggressive, but it looks I like they like won't. I feel like it's a farming Aegis. Farming slash pickoff Aegis. They yeah. won't... They don't... I think DC don't care about taking any of these out of towers right now. They care about getting more farm and finding pickoffs where they present themselves. And if a pickoff leads to a tower, that's great. But right now, their main objective is not taking out these out of towers or pushing high ground. So as it is for now, they'll stand behind their man TC here as he continues to farm up this top lane. 
and see if maybe fire want to make a move. Fire doing a bit of a response of their own bits of farm. Look at this. Moo finishes out his BKB now. We'll allow him to get in there and be that enforcer without having to deal with too much trouble along the way. But that BKB will not stop the curse. Yeah, I feel like they'll need BKBs across the board, though. Just good against the anti-mage mana break, obviously. Earthshaker, vacuum. it kind of prevents the vacuum wall combo. You can still get hit by the wall, but you don't get comboed into the vacuum. So uh, I think even Jug may go back for a BKB after the Scotty. But we'll see exactly what where fire go for now i mean fire themselves are going to play a bit of a farming game although they've got less of the map to farm it feels like it's daytime for now night soccer looking to hold the ultimate for until a fight breaks out and he wants it to come to the uh the real nighttime so he has that extra prolonged night yeah i believe once it gets it to level three the next level then he can be a bit more generous yeah. with dishing out those nightfalls but doesn't want to risk it for now obviously he'll probably look for a bkb of his own at that point you i mean you've got three bkbs tusk queen of pain have theirs night stalk will look for one potentially the jug will this is going to be bkb gaming coming from this radiant squad they move they pop the night i mean that's a slight telling sign they yeah. smoke up with this and they're looking the night stalker leads the way looking for that pickoff but if you're DC and you see that ultimate, like, out of nowhere, you're like... You see that ultimate and you see no one on the map. You're yeah, like, yeah, we're not going to be in a lane alone. That, to me, is just a bit too fishy. Yeah, I, I mean, look at look at DC. They're just grouping up as five. They're happy to take a fight here. They've, if they can find a high ground position where they take a fight with the high ground advantage, Doxy, Winter's Curse, like, that's just a combo that's going to find great results. And, yeah, they're just sitting as five right around the Roshan pit using the map to their advantage for now. Slough's going to hang around, though. That was, that was a wasted smoke from fire, and that's a precious commodity, commodity for them here in the, the late-game scenario. Mm -hmm. That will be the return of daytime, at least for now. And yep. now that means DC can go back into a comfortable farming position, and well, how would it be more comfortable than doing it in fire zone turf? Jay yep. will have the money for the Scotty now. See if he holds on to buyback, but I feel like just picking up the items. Uh, if, if you're buying back, it means you're losing fights, and losing fights to DC right now means the game is probably getting out of your hands, but we'll see. Korea headed towards the secret shop, and it looks like that's that's the call. Just to yeah, spend all his money, pick up the Scotty. The new Nightfall here, the real natural Nightfall, as they continue finishing out the rest of the farm here on the fire side. Basher in hand now for TC. The aggression of this game definitely has been turned down a couple of notches. DC wanted to see if maybe they could spark something the back end of their Aegis, but as you said from the start, more of a farm, hope for pickoff kind of a Aegis. It proves to be exactly that. They have the time to spend. Bulba has the money to spend. 3300 already oh saved boy. up on his Dark Seer. Shivas, possibly? I don't know if it's too much of a necessary yeah, against their team, but... I like the call. Against Jug, it's, it's fantastic. And, yeah. And they're all just going to look to, like, they've got these BKBs, so they're going to look to, like, BKB and try and just right-click in these fights as much as possible. So I'd say definitely an item which would benefit Bulba a lot. Maybe the Storm's going for it instead. Well, we'll see. Yeah, you're right. For now, he holds this Bloodstone of Nine Charges and a new Orchid makes his go onto Whitebeard with the pullback. Lift is going to be on Yawar. Puts him back at the tower. Now he wants to do a mild jab on the Jail, follow a vacuum, but these are all just kind of keeping him away from the tower, which DC will easily secure now. Are they going to go for it? Jail commits an Omni, but it's onto the four clustered. Now they're waiting for an ideal target, probably for this Winter's Curse. It's going to be on to J.O. himself. Beer's able to get off the Fissure. Sonic Wave to fly. White Beard, they see a war. That's going to be the Aegis now. TC's able to step back. Now he jumps in. A void onto Fluff, but Fluff is going to be fine and blinks away. Instead, they're going to go for J.O. now. Yawar with a second life gets the pullback and just tussles them right through the big wall of Bulba. Fire Nation comes into attack, but they're going to get extinguished here. This is the Digital Chaos crew. I... I mean, for fire, that's about as good as a team fight as you could hope for. They hit a four-hero snowball, and the omni-slash damage was spread, which I guess was part of the problem there. They wanted maybe on like two heroes, not on four heroes. But I mean, you're just team fighting into a lineup with Winter's Curse, Vacuum, Fissure, and an Age of Storm Spirit. That was obviously the bigger problem there. They can kill Storm once, but they're not going to kill him a second time. Well, now they got a full 40 seconds without Jo. 
And they're going to try what they can to slow them down. There you see the sonic wave with Bulba just pops those shoes, and the Guardian Greaves are going to get everyone back in fighting shape. Now it's Rax in trouble here. Casual lift on the Illusion to throw back onto TC. Stun slows him down a bit, but he has his eyes on the prize here. He's looking to take down this set of Rax. They know a victory here puts him into the Grand Finals in a rematch against Cloud9. And that's it. Rax are going to be going down here. Fire cannot do anything about it, not without their jug. Yeah. Unfortunately for Fire, they had such a strong early game that that one five-man wipe at top oh, lane... They want to get TC while he's farming this on the way out. and Oh, he gets it just too fast. And Wiper can't get there close enough, quick enough to get the silence. And DC are going to play it safe. They pick up the BKB on Storm Spirit, going just for these defensive items. I, okay, what Shiv, yeah, Shiva's got for Dax here, so Bulba, you spot on with that pickup, so... They'll have these defensive items. I wouldn't even be surprised to see Antimage pick up a BKB. May go for the Abyssal first, but... Feels like getting a BKB against the Silence, against just stuff like Snowball, Orchid from the Queen of Pain is maybe just going to be the way to go for the DC side. I don't know. It just feels like now DC are able to string together a good set of items and fire. I don't know. Are they going to be able to respond with an appropriate team fight? They have been trying to find those picks, but they seem to be coming now fewer and farther between. Score may be dead even at 15-15, but as you see, what was once a 7,500 8K net worth advantage for Fire has swung completely the other way. There's now the 8K advantage for DC. And that means that even little Biru over here has got a blink dagger on his or shaker. Hmm. That means all the more setup. Owie as well, his own blink. This is just such a... This is a team now that has just such quick catch and a quick way to get out. If things don't work out their way. And we've already saw how slippery they could be for fire without all these big items. I don't know what their response is going to be. It looks like it's going to be a split push here. Bottom lane. Fire will add the pressure onto the tier 2. Buff is going like desperate measures. Picks up a quelling blade for some like sneaky tree plays. But this is not going to lead to all too much it looks like right now. They're going for a bit of a trade here but... TC are already going to be on the high ground before they even get this tier 2 tower. They've got a TP back and they've got to defend. They can't. They're going to go down two mm -hmm. lanes of racks and not even take racks, I believe. Two they show up, this. three. They all start trickling in here. Yeah. But DC, they'll be happy with just getting this tier 3 and getting out. The second they lift, Yawar makes a move in, tries to go for Fluff. He's able to get the blink. Snowball's going to save him so he can bleed back. Oh, 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 curse, curse, vacuum, pull back. Echo, oh my god! That's the dream. The one here and on the snowball got Winter's Curse and everyone snowballed on top of them. Oh man, my god. Now they're gonna look to try to close this one out entirely. They buy back, they look to go in. Jail on his last leg is gonna be crumbled and pulled apart here. This is it, this is it. Whitebeard's gonna be going down. One by one they fall and that is it. It is all over. It's gonna be the rematch. Digital Chaos will face Cloud9 in the best of five grand final. What a valiant effort from Team yeah. Fire. A very impressive game one. A very impressive start to game three. But Digital Chaos, man. Yeah. Highlight worthy team fights coming out from them. Two big ones back to back will secure this. I mean, we kind of see DC play from behind and get a clutch win here, which is a good show in going against into the finals. It kind of proves they have the late game, good decision making, really polished play. But hats off to fire. We kind of asked the question, like, as far as teams battling out for being that second best in NA after EG, is fire in the picture with DC and Cloud9? I think after best of three like this, you've got to say this is a team that can go at it with DC with Cloud9. They had a hell of a showing here, and this was a series that could have really gone either way. Yeah.